So, what is actually a software architect? What is his objective? What is he actually doing? Who is he working with? Well, all these questions are great, but before we will answer them, let's discuss other types of architect. The word architect in the software world is an overloaded one. There are quite a few types of architects, and let's take a look at the most common ones, which are infrastructure architect, software architect, and enterprise architect. There are some more types of architects, but they are more of a niche, and we won't talk about them. So, let's see what those types of architects are. First, infrastructure architect. The infrastructure architect is responsible for designing the infrastructure of a given system. And by infrastructure, I mean all the non-software related elements such as servers, virtual machines, network, storage, etc. He is responsible for all these and also to make sure they work nicely with the system developed. The infrastructure architect should be familiar with the system's requirements, so he can make sure the infrastructure he designs will support those requirements. For example, if the system is expected to grow by 3 terabytes annually, the infrastructure architect should make sure the storage for this system will be able to handle this load. The career path for infrastructure architect goes through infrastructure expert. You have to be well versed in infrastructure design, implementation and configuration in order to become a good infrastructure architect. Next, the software architect. The software architect, sometimes called also solution architect or system architect, is responsible for the architecture of the software. Since we will be dealing with the software architect for the rest of this course, I'll skip to the enterprise architect. The enterprise architect works with the top management of the organization to make sure the IT of the organization is an enabler for the business and not a hindrance. In many organizations, business decisions such as starting a new sale or entering a new business field is held back by the IT, which needs time to adapt to the new requirements. The enterprise architect usually works with the CEO and CIO of the organization to find out what are the main bottlenecks, what holds back the IT, and how it can be streamlined to support business continuity. Since the enterprise architect operates at a very high level in the organization, he has almost no work relations with development-oriented roles such as developers and team leaders. In order to become an enterprise architect, one has to be first a senior software architect or an experienced project manager. As I said earlier, the enterprise architect role is not very technical and you don't always have to have a practical hands-on experience in order to become one, although it's definitely a plus. Great, so having discussed other types of architects, let's meet our course protagonist, the software architect.